First, though, just about everything seems to be going right for the Canadian economy these days. Canada's a G7 leader in terms of GDP. Blockbuster job growth has brought the unemployment rate down to 5.9 percent. That's the lowest it's been since 2008. But here's why Canada could be called a victim of its own success. A growing economy and a bumper crop of skilled workers has created a labor shortage, at least according to a new poll by the Canadian Federation of Independent Business. The CFIB says there were more than 361,000 jobs left unfilled in the third quarter. That's the highest ever recorded. Then there's the corresponding vacancy rate, which is the proportion of unfilled jobs relative to all jobs available in the private sector. It jumped to 2.8%, the highest since before the 2008 recession. The CFIB said, we need government to take action, to find solutions for chronic shortages that inhibit a small business's ability to take on new contracts, expand and innovate. Well, earlier today, I spoke with McKinsey's Dominic Barton. He's the chair of Finance Minister Bill Morneau's Economic Advisory Council, and he too is calling on the government to take action to urgently help Canada's workforce to acquire new skills. Here's what his recommendations are. The two, our two recommendations this time are focused on business investment right. and, and then on the skilling, the reskilling right. side. And I think on the investment side, we've got to make sure the regulation is agile for new businesses to be able to be built and right. existing ones to be able to invest and move forward. That's So a, a more agile, comprehensive review, make them more efficient, more consistent, and more forward-looking through healthcare, agriculture, fintech. You know, we've got to have regulations that are, that are not restricting right. things but building it. And then you know, skilling was probably one of the biggest issues we think that's facing our generation, it's going to be, or m multiple generations. The, the automation and technology changes are so significant and are going to affect, you know, so many Canadians. We, we've got to have that system in place to be able to help reskill adults. This is the idea that so many jobs are going to be lost, not to robots, but to technology, right. that we've seen slowly sort of changing workforces since the 1980s, but it's about to really take off by yeah, your measure. That's exactly. We, we, and again, we're, we're not sort of Luddites. We think there'll be new jobs created too. It's like jobs lost and jobs gained. But the scale of it and the speed of it that's coming is so significant. We, we think, and I think we're lowballing it, that, that 10 to 12% of Canadian workers will lose their jobs unless they're reskilled right. by 2030 because of the technology. That's, that's 2 million people. Right. And that's lowballing it. And then for those people who do have jobs, they're going to have to keep reskilling to keep their jobs as they exactly. go through it. Because all the reports say it's not just that the job will disappear to automation, but that the tasks that the job requires will disappear and will alter through automation. And that people will need to have a way higher level of skills exactly. and, and technical know-how to do the jobs that they do today. That's exactly it. And, and I think what, we're, what it means is that we no longer will be educated by the time we're 23 or 25, if you do post-secondary right. and you're done, you have to keep doing it. So this lifelong learning and, and, the, and it has to be part-time, it has to be modular, it has to be easy for a 45-year-old to, with a family, to, restruct, to restructure what they're doing um, and be able to be in the, in the place or we're going to have a big problem. You guys have had now a series of these recommendations that you've been rolling out sort of slowly since you were tasked with all of this. You also are looking at how the government is dealing with these and, yep. and what your report card on them is. What, right. what, what have you found? Well, we've, we feel pretty good overall and we're actually quite excited by what they've done. You know, there's, we'll, we'll have a total of 13 recommendations. Right. We wanted to have about a dozen. Um, and when we look at the last, the eight, um, we feel very good about the infrastructure bank right. and when, what, the, what, what the government's doing on the infrastructure side. On innovation with the super clusters, there's some fantastic ideas. You know, I wish we could do not five but ten because there's really good ideas on that front. The growth capital, the procurement, which is going to get launched on Thursday. Right. Um, the areas we'd love to push more on is immigration. You know, we may be a bit out there. Yeah, you, we were, you came out we, swinging on we were, that. Yeah, and, we were, <laughs> and, and they, no, I know they took on some of that, but they didn't go nearly as far as no, you wanted. And some people might think we're a bit out there on it, but yeah, we wanted to go to 450,000. Right. But they did do, do the high skill fast track, which has right. been very good. Um, and it's an increase, and I, I hope it'll go forward. The other one is the trade side. Right. We. We're very, very keen that we establish trading, formal trading relationships with China, India, and Japan. We've, we've got to do that. Uh, we know the whole environment's getting 
tougher. So we're, we're just right. a bit more aggressive on that side. And on that side, we had the conversations on TPP weirdly fell apart at the last minute on us. The, the, the talks that everybody assumed China was just going to, you know, sort of green light the, the, the fast tracking of talks between us and them on, on a, a future free trade agreement. That didn't happen. Do you get a sense of what has gone wrong, if something's gone wrong, and what we need to do to, to sort of correct course? I, you know, obviously, we would love to have it go faster right away. I, I think that there's some, you know, they want to get this, the conditions set up right. So I'm still confident there's a strong desire to do it, but to do it properly. And I think as long as, and I'm not privy to this, but if, right. as long as there's a time box to it. So it may take a little longer to get it set up properly, but then once we're in, let's hammer it. Uh, but So I think they're getting, even with TPP, we're a significant player, so I do think there are some elements that we want to make sure, right? It's better to do that up front than For during. Sure. But then once we get it lined up, I hope we motor. But uh, do, you, do you worry that the way that both of those conversations, the TPP and the China talks ended, can affect that time box that, that we're, we're now outside the box? No, because I think that they, I think that there will be, there will be, have been discussions that sort of say, look, we got to get this set up right and then we can move. And I think with what happened with Europe, that actually moved, you know, that's taken quite a long time, but they jumped onto that thing right. and moved it. So I, I actually feel confident. I obviously would just wish especially given what's happening with NAFTA. It's not, you know, we just need to make sure we do it. And, um, but clearly they want to get the conditions right before they motor. I just, I just would be keen that we have a time box. Uh, and lastly, we went from, as we say, the, the, the first one on, on immigration to, I think you said 12, and now we're at yeah. 13. Uh, what now? What happens now? Well, I think now we, I think we're, I don't know how much more we have in the tank on it. I think, and we want it, we said, look, let's do a dozen. We think that these 13 will over deliver if we implement them right. on, on our target, which is let's improve, you know, pre-tax median income by $15,000 um, for the middle. You know, that, that's a key thing we're doing. And we think if we do these, we can, we can drive it. So we've got, to us, it's not about more ideas, it's about implementation. So I think the focus is much more on how to help ensure we get the implementation and drive it through. And hopefully there's a small enough number of them, but they're significant enough and they're clear whether it's happening or not that we can do it. So I think the focus is much more on implementation than new things. Well, on that, we'll leave it there. It's great to see you as always. Thanks Thank you so much.